Ken, thanks so much for being here, because this is so we're all interested. We just heard about Walt Disney Company, what they're going to try to do with the theme parks. Give us an outline of exactly what the securities industry, industry thinks it can do in bringing back employees. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, David, and thank you for uh, thank you for having me on. Um, so, you know, SIFMAS, we've been in our business continuity planning mode really since January, and and worked with the industry to uh, go to uh, working remote, where you know firms reported up to ninety five percent of their staff were working either in backup sites or or from home. And now, uh, the, the, over the last couple of weeks, the shift has been uh, when it's when it's time. How can firms begin to return to office in some normal fashion? Now, some firms have reported that you know they've had some smaller share of, of staff coming in, but as they start to think in larger terms, what are the considerations that they're going to need to take you know to to work with? And so we surveyed 60 member firms along with a number of, of uh, industry utilities. Uh, to come up with the, this list of considerations that we put together. And they're really broken into areas affecting staff safety, legal liability concerns, employee sentiment and privacy, uh, questions around screening and testing, HR, and, of course, uh, what the local and, and federal government uh, directives are and health care advisories. And we broke it down into, into – um, uh, planning, implementation, legal compliance, communications, and human resources. And, of course, every firm will have to tailor their own plan. But what we're trying is, is the firms collectively coming together and saying, what is everyone thinking about uh, and, how they're and how they're going to do this when, when, the, when they feel it's time to start bringing people back in? Well, and, and when you talk about start bringing people back in, one of the things you talk about is really doing some prioritizing of who comes in and not bringing everybody back in at once. Interestingly, traders are at sort of at the top of your list, but you also say you should be six feet apart. The trading floors I've been on don't have six feet between the desks. Is that doable? Well, firms are certainly working on that now. The whole question around PPE and spacing and, and, and social distancing, uh, firms have been spending a lot of time on figuring out how they can do it. You're right um, in terms of, of who are the first people uh, to, that firms will hope to bring back in will be in the sales and trading and front office, you know, followed by firm funding and payments. And, uh, you know, things like uh, IT support, compliance uh, operations, uh, will will probably be in the later phases along with advisory, um, but you're right. Firms are there's a, and we go into this a whole host of, of of logistical and office planning concerns that firms have to take into consideration as they bring back in a, a mass, as well as things like split shifts. Um, uh, you know how you deal with getting people up in elevators, and of course we can't can't underestimate the whole issues around transportation and how people get in. You know, in, in many cases, in the New York area, obviously using mass transit. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that stood out for me was the use of benchmarks or rules, because a lot of people are saying, just let me plan. How can I know what's going on? One of the things you suggest is a little bit like what Governor Cuomo has done to some extent with his benchmarks here in New York State, saying set out some rules to say when we get to these kinds of numbers, then we'll go to the next phase, but not until then. Yeah, I think firms, again, every firm will do it what meets their most immediate needs. And, and many firms are thinking of different ideas, you know, in terms of how will they, you know, what will the offices look like in the future? A lot of firms report that they will, uh, they're not going to rush back in uh, even through the end of the year, um, and certainly not before uh, there's a vaccine. And, and further, uh, firms are thinking, you know, longer term policies of uh, potentially disaggregating staff. Uh, and, and in many cases, uh, you know, staff that may uh, work remotely on a more you know, longer term basis, possibly permanent basis. And of course, that raises a whole host of issues around, you know, regula regulation and compliance where we've been engaged with our regulators on, you know, if, if we have a, a quote unquote new normal or, or whatever you want to call it, you know, how do we make sure that we're fit within the rule set or the rule set fits with that, you know, with that new sort of business model? Yeah, Ken, as you say, your industry to some extent has already had to adapt to working from home one way or the other. Do you have any sense from your members uh, when they are free to come back, how many people will come back as opposed to how many people will remain at home? Well, I think in the initial stages, I mean, we're starting to see, you know, the industry largely went to almost 95 percent work from home, and, and many are still in that mode today. But we are starting to see, uh, you know, people starting to come back in, particularly in the sales and trading area, uh, in the front office area. But it's still, you know, seven, you know, 
still at, at least at 75%, I would say, for most firms as they report to us. Many firms report to us that they're not likely to get back to below 50% uh, uh, before the end of the year. Now, again, everything is fluid, and that could change up or down based upon you know, the facts on the ground in terms of the vaccine, uh, testing capabilities, and the like. But that's sort of, a, sort of the, the, what you hear on average uh, that firms are thinking about. But again, I've talked to some executives who have said, you know, there are certain people that we found are just as productive working remotely and for whatever reason may choose to work remotely. And we may, we may endorse that on a permanent basis going forward. Now, what level that is, we don't know at this point in time. So I do think there will be some long-term structural change, even as people are brought back into the office. 